It's finally here, the Roborock S7 Max V Ultra. As soon as I heard about the S7, I knew that an S7 Max V was on the horizon, and here it is. The official release date is in April, but I got this as an early review sample, and it's pretty fantastic. This is the most advanced robot vacuum on the market. It's packed full of amazing features, laser navigation, camera-based AI. Warning, enemy detected. Initiate termination. Initiate plasma laser. Uh, okay, maybe it's got too many features? So the first thing you notice about this robot is that it's beautiful. I mean, they really hold out all the stops. I mean, look at this thing. The, the flat black finish. Uh, I'm not sure how I feel about these little racing stripes yet, but they do add a nice little touch. I mean, everything about this is just, it screams premium robot. You've got the multicolored LED up here. You've got a light bar that goes on and off as needed. Cameras laser sensors the dock itself is very nice i mean look at this thing it looks so techy it's actually a lot smaller than i thought it would be um it's a little bit deeper than something like the normal t10 or dream w10 but it's not really any wider and it's definitely shorter and it just looks so cool look at this thing looks like a spaceship all right so here we've got the familiar um clean water, dirty water tanks. Now these are considerably smaller than something like the uh, Dream W10 or the Narwhal, uh, but the water um, usage seems to be more efficient here. Oh, look, I forgot this little plastic thing. So the water lasts about as long. Of course, here you have the dirty water tank. This is the dustbin cover. Now, one thing I noticed is that if you're not careful when the bag is new, if you pinch it, it's very easy to pinch the, the bag with the lid and then the dustbin won't work very well, the, uh, the auto empty thing. So if you notice that yours is not cleaning out its bin completely, that could be why, because it needs the suction from that in order to um, do a good job. Um, this is the uh, auto empty dustbin extraction port. This is the mop cleaning. This, little, this thing goes back and forth. This is a bristle brush, it rotates. Clean water goes in, dirty water goes out. These are the charging contacts and this a little thing fills the back of the water tank right there okay and i'm going to avoid making obvious jokes but the system seems to work really well um i haven't had i mean i've only been using this for three days but i've used it extensively to clean my house several times I haven't really had any issues with it does a very good job of emptying the dustbin if you don't pinch the bag as i mentioned previously So it's got a uh, cord wrap behind it, but this cable is very fat and it can't really do more than um, maybe two wraps. And it has a hard time fitting in there for the second one. You could do it, but you have to be careful with it and do a you know, thorough job. Um, for me, this is enough, so that's fine. All right, so rather than um, guess as to the size of these things, I'm gonna take some actual measurements. So depth-wise, obviously the Roborock is significantly deeper. Height-wise, I was right, but not by much. And width-wise, let's see. That's about 16 inches, just a hair over. And this is just a, a little bit under. So comparable size, except for the depth. So one concern that I had as soon as Roborock announced the S7 is that this brush and housing would scratch the floor the way the Roomba S9 does, and to a lesser extent, the INJ7. Now the issue is that dirt will stick to the rubber brush um, and that this is a uh, free-floating housing, much more free-floating than uh, most others, and so this makes firm contact with the floor. Now I've had some subscribers report that the S7 scratched their floors, but only a few, and they, most of them were reporting that this is what was doing the scratching. So my theory is that um, maybe something gets caught on here, or maybe there's some sort of casting issue where there's a little rough um, sharp edge here. So if you're concerned about that, I will do some tests. So far, I have not seen any evidence of scratching whatsoever, and I've looked carefully. I've had this thing, you know, go back and forth on the same floor that I initially noticed the Roomba scratching going on um, in one area, and I didn't see anything. Now, um, if you're concerned, when you get this, I would check these for um, anything rough. But other than that, so far, so good. 
and the interesting thing about this brush, I really like this design, is uh, it alternates very, very soft, squeegee things with very, very hard ones. So, uh, and the soft ones are taller. So this is for basically for hard floors, and this is what will agitate your carpet. And these bumps might have something to do with preventing um, built up dirt on the brush from scratching the floor. So like I said, we'll see in a plexiglass test, but I think it'll be okay. And so far, so good. Well, look who decided to show up to the party. It's the S6 Max-V. You're here to check out your, hey, hey, that's not yours. Get, get out of there. You be nice to him. He's your big brother and you show him some respect. He's a little long in the tooth, but I don't want to see any bullying. Got it? Good. Speaking of bullying, look at this. Leave poor Stinky alone, you monster. He's just curious. All right, so normally when you initiate a, uh, a cleaning cycle with both mopping and vacuuming, what you're gonna see is the robot will first come out, spin around, and clean its mop pad. It'll clean that mop pad in the beginning of the cleaning cycle and at the end too. So we'll speed that whole wa washing thing up because it does take a while and if you're not used to uh, self-washing robot you might um, you know wonder why it's taking so long to even start cleaning but at least when it comes out of the dock its mopping pad is wet and ready to go. All right, so we're gonna have a quick look at some um, object avoidance stuff. And this robot has not only cameras, but uh, lasers. So this is the first robot on the market that has both systems working in tandem. So the firmware is gonna go through a bunch of updates. You know, it's gonna get better with time. Here it correctly identified the shoe and stayed away from it and its laces. And this is where I decided to complicate matters by tossing in a cord. and it gets angry. This is your last warning. Fine, fine. Now this little piece of rubber dog poo uh, is interesting because it's very low to the ground uh, and every other robot I've tested has had problems with it except the Roborock S6 Max-V after its firmware updates. So this seems to have recognized it correctly on the first try, although it did hit it with its uh, side brush a little bit, but then every single robot that I've tested has done that, so that's not a huge deal. But as I said, this system will improve with firmware updates because this is the first time they've used uh, both cameras and lasers at the same time. So there's only room for improvement here. And I think it's gonna get pretty great. So this is the hard floor cleaning test. Uh, just a little preview, nothing uh, in depth, but you can see that the exhaust isn't blowing stuff around. Um, it's picking up pretty much everything, which is pretty much what I'd expect from a Roborock flagship. So there's nothing surprising here. Um, what I was curious about though is the mopping capability because I haven't exactly had the best luck with um, vibrating mopping pads. So uh, I was particularly curious about how this system would work compared to the counter rotating mopping pads um, such as the ones on the uh, Dream W10 or the Norwell T10. So I just did a quick test with some dried half and half um, and cranberry juice and it did a surprisingly fantastic job. All right, so this is where the milk was. No streaks, nothing. Don't feel anything sticky at all. Actually, it's half and half, not milk, but close enough. And this is where the cranberry juice was. Also nothing. Wow, that's just water. Perfect, very interesting. All right, so that's a wrap for my first look at the Roborock S7 Max V Ultra. I've been using it for a few days, like I mentioned, it's doing a great job so far. I'm very excited to see what happens in the future. I'm going to do a lot of different tests for our object avoidance, um, navigation, cleaning tests, all kinds of stuff. I'm going to put this head to head against the uh, Dream W10 in mopping. Uh, I'm going to report on long term reliability app features. This app is, is crazy. It's, it's got so many features. The only thing it doesn't have is the ability to save and name clean zones, which I hope they'll implement in the future. But other than that, the app is fully featured. It's a full suite of Google and Alexa commands like go clean a specific room, um, return to the dock, all kinds of stuff, not just start and stop the way a lot of uh, less expensive robots do. This is, a, this is a premium, premium robot in every sense of the word. 
So if you want to see more videos like this one and all the rest of my um, videos about this specific robot, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, give me a like. That helps the algorithm a lot. Really appreciate it. And uh, thank you for watching. Until next time, I'm Mike, and this is Mr. Rumbato. Mm -hmm.